And so today, we will be talking about life in the kingdom. And the passage there is in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11 actually, but we will just read, um, it's until 11, right? Hallelujah. So as we see this in the, the slide, let us all read the word of God. Can I ask everyone to stand and let us read our passage? From verse 1, verse 1, it says there, Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And this is Jesus here. And he opened his mouth. Let's continue. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are those are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Hallelujah. Let us all be seated. So here, this Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes that we just read, is the very words or the teaching of Jesus Christ. We see in verse 1 that seeing the crowds, he went, this is Jesus here. He went up on the mountain because this is in chapter 5 of the Matthew, the first book of the gospel. So Jesus, in, in chapter 4, it says there that Jesus started his ministry. So the ministry of Jesus is preaching, teaching, and healing. And all the crowds are always flocking around him. Amen? They are always following him because they were so amazed. The crowds here, they were so amazed of the teachings of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus. They see the healing, the signs and wonders. And so they were amazed. But they, these crowds, it it's, um, says here that they are not really, they, they, they love to flock and follow Jesus. They, it's like they're spectators. But they are really not committing or being serious. They are neutral and they're not committing and really believing what Jesus is, is giving them. That's why they are addressed as crowds. And the disciples here are the believers, the learners, the one that Jesus already really taking care, mentoring. Amen? So, when Jesus, so the crowds are uh, just the um, um, back, uh, um, what do you call this? A background that um, these, these people, the disciples, that I said that believers and learners are those who accepted the invitation of Jesus. You know, in chapter 4, verse 17, Jesus said there, repent after he was baptized. No, the, by John the Baptist, when he started, uh, and then after that, he had uh, 40 days prayer, uh, fasting. And then the enemy tempted him. And so after that, he started this ministry and he said to the crowd, wherever he goes, that repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, that's so powerful. There may be people that would hear that. What is he saying? Like, it will catch the attention of the people, right? Repent for the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, during this time, the people are being oppressed. They were waiting for the Messiah. They were really, um, um, like, they, they are oppressed. 
You know, the rulers are being really hard on them. They experience poverty. They experience all this kind, the, 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 the oppression and all this, um, uh, parang pag, papagod, naghihirap sila. You know? Their life is really in difficult situation. They were in difficult situation. Di ba, pag tayo, that is, I, I believe that is the nature of mankind. When they're being oppressed, when they experience difficulties, they lose hope, and you are kind of waiting for someone to save you. Amen? So in this time, during this time, the earthly ministry of Jesus, people are being oppressed, and they were waiting for the Messiah. So, there, the Beatitude. So, this is commonly called the Beatitude, right? So, this is like the, the teaching of Jesus to those who have accepted Him already. So, again, let me just go back a little bit. The crowd... So Jesus was in the crowd, the multitude. Sometimes it, the word used is multitude. But then he went up to the mountain. Amen? So you know, during that time, they said, the, wala silang mga amphitheater, wala silang tulad sa atin, or yung, yung place na talagang, um, uh, or Jesus does not um, choose a place. Wherever he goes, he just teach, right? So in the up, in the mountain, like a hill, he went up there and sat down. And it says that um, that is the culture of the rabbi or the teachers, Hebrew teachers, that they sit down when they teach. So Jesus began to open his mouth and he taught his disciples. So this beatitude, as I said earlier, it's not a preaching or a teaching for salvation. Amen? It is not for salvation, but it is for those people that already have Jesus in their life. That is why it is life in the kingdom. How we should be living our lives as kingdom people. Amen? Amen? Do we agree with that? Because salvation comes instantly. But to remain, we have to work on our salvation. We have to follow our King. Kasi sabi ko nga last time, the, the, the word, ang salita ng hari, hindi nababali. At ang people, kingdom people, under the King are subject to the King. We are called also as subjects. Kung subject ka, talagang you, wala kang ibang dapat gawin kung hindi yung rules ng hari. So the beatitude, the beatitude comes from a Latin word that me a uh, Latin word beatus meaning blessed that is why all those verses it started with blessed because beatitude means blessed so it comprised this um beatitudes these uh, eight beatitudes are comprised with three elements so Kung mapapansin niyo, blessed are those or blessed are the, right? Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Blessed are the peacemaker. Blessed are the meek. Amen? So blessed. So meaning blessed. So Jesus Christ, it is Jesus Christ's word. It is He who is pronouncing to His disciples that you are blessed. When you are, but this, this, that's the first element, the, pronoun, pr, the pronouncing of the, the, the word blessed, you know. In Psalms 1, chapter 1, it started with the word blessed. Anong sabi doon sa Psalms 1? It says there that blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So do you, um, uh, na, napapansin nyo? Have you noticed that the word blessed always after that word comes like um, um, negotiation, like uh, what do you call that? Parang um, hallelujah. Parang uh, ano ba yun? 
Hallelujah. Okay, I'll go back to that later. So after the word blessed is like condition. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is condition. You will be blessed. You are blessed when you are this. Right? So that's the second element. It does not describe different groups of people. Different groups of people. Those only who are meek or who are pure in heart. But a com composite picture of the kind of person who will inherit the kingdom. Amen. Who will inherit the kingdom? Do you want, do you, tr right now, I believe because walang makaka, wala nang salvation nyo, kundi kayo lang. If you um, purposely and intentionally turn away from your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. So, but here, Sabi, do, so you are king, uh, kingdom's people. And it says that it, you will inherit the kingdom. You know, we are here still, we are still here in this world. Amen? And you know the parables of the, the, um, the goat and the sheep, the parables of the, the weed and the um, tares, right? The, that we are still combined, mixed pa rin. Amen? In this world, although we can have the kingdom of heaven here on earth, but then still we are mixed with the unbelievers. Amen? That is why while we are still here on this earth, we need to subject ourselves into the kingdom of God. And how you subject yourselves into the kingdom of God is how you live. This is like the manifesto. This is like the, the manual of how to be in the kingdom of God. Amen? And how to be the kingdom people. Amen? So here, this is the composite picture of kind of person who will inherit the kingdom of God. And that's what, what it says is that when Jesus comes again, that is why this beatitude, the promise there, are now, but also part are now, but the also part is the future. Amen? When Jesus Christ returns, amen? That is when everyone who believes will be in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Jesus, the, king, the, the kingdom that never ends. Amen? The kingdom of God forever and ever. Amen? That time, when that comes, when that time comes, then, wala nang mga, ano, you graduate na. You don't need to learn. You don't need to read the, the, the Bible. You don't need to be taught anymore because you're there already. And what we do is just praise and worship. Amen? Hallelujah. So that is the second element, the, the people. So those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, those who are pure in heart. And the third element is looking ahead. I've already mentioned it in the future. Amen. So the coming kingdom. So now, Blessed. So, the first element, blessed. It is, remember, I would like to reiterate this, that this is the word of Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Blessed. So, what does blessed mean? You know, in the New Testament, blessed, it can be happy, you know? Or blessed also, in Greek, in Greek word, it says, it's makarios. Which means, which means large or lengthy and also means fortunate or happy. So, ibig sabihin, blessed are you. You will be happy. But not, you know, happy that is um, based on circumstances or situation. Amen? But it is, it is more than that. More than a temporary or circumstantial 
feeling of happiness. Do you know? That is why others would ask, what is the difference of happy or happiness and joy? So you're happy when something happened, like you pass the exam. It's based on circumstances or situation, but joy is something out of your heart that walang karason-rason, but you are joyful because you know that your God is with you, that you are blessed. That is what it means. So more than a temporary or circumstantial feeling of happiness, this is a state of well-being in a relationship to God that belongs to those who responded to Jesus, to the preaching of Jesus that repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. So joy, being in a relationship, that is why you can have, can you be happy when you did not pass the exam, right? malungkot ka. But then, the joy is that even though you're, did, you did not pass, you know that that's not the end for you because you know that your God is in control of your life. You know that God is sovereign in your life. You know that God has something better in your life. You know that God wants to prosper you and bless you. That is joy. No matter of what the situation is, you are having this good feeling. Amen? Especially when you know that God is good all the time. Amen? Napakasarap magsayaw sa kantang God is good all the time. Tama lang naman talaga. Pag declare mong God is good all the time, talagang dapat masayang-masaya ka. Amen? Parang hindi ka mapikilan sa pagtatalon-talon at pagsayaw. Hallelujah. So, in some ways, the Lord's declaration of blessed is a pledge of divine reward for the inner spiritual character of the righteous. So in other ways, it is his description of the spiritual attitude and state of people who are right with God. You know, when your relationship is right, relationship with God is right, you know, you, you, your, your, your spirit will not be like suppressed, you know? No matter how the enemy would try, you would remain rejoicing. Diba? Isa yan sa, sa command, sa sabi ni, ni Paul, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen? Because you know that you are blessed. That is the product of your relationship, being right with God. Amen? So, we are blessed by having a right relationship with God. Hallelujah. So, now, it has been described, right, as a manifesto of His kingdom. Ito yung sinasabi ng Panginoon that this should look like what it should be in my kingdom. Amen? In my kingdom. And sabi natin, di ba, we are kingdom people. Ulit-ulit ko, ano? Kasi para ma-remind tayo, we are kingdom people. So, Jesus unveils the foundation and the character of life in that kingdom. So it is very, di ba, marami na tayong naririnig. We hear all the time from the preachings all over kung sino man ang pinakakinggan natin, mga podcast, that our character is very important. What is seen in us? And this is what Jesus is saying. This is very important to Jesus. Our character, not what we can do, but our character, amen. It because it should, um, it should show who it should um, makita sa atin yung character ni Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. So <clears throat> here he teaches Jesus teaches the ethical guidelines, guidelines of life in His kingdom. So and the guidelines point to that quality of righteousness that characterizes life in the kingdom. And I said earlier, now in part and fully in the future. So let's go one by one. Blessed are the poor in spirit for their, 
For there is the kingdom of heaven, poor in the spirit. So, ang background niyan in the Old Testament, you can see in Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1 to 3. But let's go to verse 1 first. It says in verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Amen. To bring good news to the poor. And it is quoted by Luke in chapter 4. This very verse of, this very word of Isaiah. So, poor. What, when we say poor, what, what comes to our mind or on our hearts? Are you poor? No. So, sometimes yung poor, ina-associate natin kaagad sa ating kakayanan economically, right? Our finances, our possession. So maybe young people nowadays, they would consider themselves poor if they don't have gadget, if they don't have PS, PS5, if they don't have um, all sorts of gadgets, you know? You know, <laughs> young people, maybe they could say, are you poor when you don't have that? So... <clears throat> Poor in terms of possession or finances. But here, sinasabi ng Lord, it's more than that. Poor in the spirit. Amen? So, in, poor in the spirit, being, having a contrite heart or humbleness before God. So, the word Isaiah uses describes the people who had been taken into exile. When, when, when Isaiah wrote this, he was describing the situation or the people, the Israelites, that was in exile. You know how hard it was. You know, they are the chosen people. They are so blessed that God continuously blessing them. But because of their disobedience, that they were sent to exile. Amen? Because of their sin. So what happened when you are in exile? Hindi ka magiging... Amo doon. You, you will not be served there, there, but you will be the one serving. You are ser- a servant through and through. Amen? So, here, they were, of course, poor, having their line, land and possession taken away. So, poor economically because basically, literally, they don't own anything anymore. Amen? They, are in, they were in a foreign land. And also, they were afflicted and oppressed that they were powerless, without hope, and they were desperate. Amen? They were desperate. That, that the physical poverty was intensified by their poverty of their spirit. You know, when you don't have anything, when you are lacking, no? Pag nawalan ka ng trabaho, if you lost your job, so you will maybe think that, oh, where will I get to pay all my bills? But you can do something about it because you are being positive. Because you know that your God is with you. But when your spirit is crushed, when you're discouraged, when you are poor in spirit, that is double. It's like multiple times being poor and being depressed. Amen? A person that is poor in spirit or depressed, it's hard for them to back up there on their feet. Amen? So, here, they were oppressed, they were powerless, without hope, they were desperate. Amen? So, Isaiah brought, <clears throat> Isaiah brought the people of the, his, the, his day good news that they would be delivered from bondage. Amen? So, that was the time of, of Isaiah. The prophet, that's his um, um, uh, job. To encourage people, those who have, like, on the verge of giving up, those who are oppressed, those who are discouraged and hopeless, the work or the job of the prophets is to deliver the word of God to encourage people, either to warn or to encourage, to bless people, right? So in the day of Isaiah, they, they, he encouraged the people. But during the time of Jesus, 
not only encouraged the people, but really delivered the people. Amen? Because during that time that the people, the Israelites were waiting for the Messiah, Jesus Christ came so that they will be redeemed. Amen? They will be redeemed. So Jesus here brought the good news and it, it's continuously bringing the good news. Amen? So the good news of God, He did not make them rich. Hindi lang niya pinrovide yung, yung need ng mga tao physically or economically but even more so rich in earthly possession and power but he fulfilled their greatest need so in this time and in this season we are all people that are needful lagi tayong may kailangan di ba meron tayong parang laging something na kailangan nating gawin or kailangan natin to have in need of healing in need of work in need of provision in need of favor in need of 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 chill, like babies to have we always need something amen but and god can provide all this but do you think what is the greatest need that you have right now you think all these things hindi ko binibilito yung mga needs ninyo or pinagdadaanan ninyo but these things can easily be provided and resolved but the need spiritually only god can meet amen only the work of jesus christ on the cross can need can meet this need and that is our spiritual need. Amen? So, people who are poor in spirit are those who are humbled by God. So, they realize that they have nothing in this life that they can contribute to receive the kingdom of heaven. Do you think that there is something that you can do out of your own so that you will be saved? So that you will be the kingdom of people. So that you will belong to the family of God. There is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that we can do or something good, whatever it is, how good it is. That is not enough for you to be saved and to belong to the kingdom of God. Amen? Only the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. So they have afflicted their soul, meaning that they have humbled themselves and repented with deep contrition and they have come to the king as helpless and hopeless sinners. That is being poor in spirit when you realize that you have nothing good in you, that you cannot do anything at all to be saved. Amen? That the you are powerless. Amen? So, when you receive the invitation of Jesus, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, you are acknowledging that you are poor in spirit and you need the salvation of Jesus Christ. You need God. Amen? And you humble yourself before God. Amen? And acknowledging that you are a sinner and you are in need of saving. So there is no arrogance in them, no self-righteousness. Bakit itong sinasabi? This is why we are making this clear. So that Because sometimes, you know, we are always preaching that salvation is instant. But you know what? It's between you and the Lord. The Lord sees your heart. If you really and truly receive the salvation of God, the gospel of God, only you know and God sees it. Amen? Without pretension, that is why being poor in spirit is like humbling yourself totally, totally um, leaving behind your past, your sin. Amen? And accepting the salvation of God wholeheartedly. So there is no arrogance. So... No pretension, therefore they are free for God. Everyone who wishes to enter the kingdom must be spiritually poor for the salvation is a gift from God. 
Amen? So next, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So these times, yung, yung poor in spirit is now, this one, they will be comforted in the future. Here, mourning. Sabi doon ulit sa, sa Isaiah 61, sa verse 2, sabi doon, To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And verse 3, To grant to those who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mournings. So, mourning. You will be comforted. Lahat tayo, may mga pinagdadaanan tayo, di ba? Yan lagi sa mga sharing, kahit dito lang tayo, we are st- strengthened here when we are together praising and worshiping God. But sometimes, on our own, like by our selves, na magnify or na naiisip natin yung mga pinagdadaanan natin. Amen? And that is not bad at all when you are being realistic of what you're going through. You know? God does not, is not telling us to deny this. Like parang pag iniisip mo or ina-acknowledge mo all this situation, negative situation, parang sometimes we have that mindset na nagkakasala tayo. But no, it is good that we re- realize what level we are or what situation we are in so that we can ask for help, so that God can work in us. Amen? So, those who mourn, this is the promise of God. Those who mourn will be comforted. Sabi dito that instead of our, sabi di ba? Instead of the God to all who mourn, give comfort to grant to those who are who mourn in Zion to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. You know, during this time in their culture, when they are mourning, they would change their clothes into sackcloth. Yung alam mo yun siguro how do we say this? Yung mga tao sa sa street. But sometimes they dress well then, ano? <laughs> yung mga homeless, di ba? But you know, siguro sa Pilipinas, Yung sa Pilipinas na talagang minsan may makasalubong kang uh, hindi maayos yung pag-iisip. So they cannot take care of themselves. Alam mo yung, yung gutay-gutay, gutay-gutay ba? Tama yung Tagalog ko. Gutay-gutay yung damit na madumi, na hindi nakaligo. So that is when they are mourning. When they were mourning, that's how they look. Amen? Kahit na nag-fasting sila, they, they look like that. That's why they were rebuked. In the New Testament, that when you are fasting, you should put your your put oil on your head. You should beautify yourself. So when you are mourning, the the Lord's promise is that instead of this sackcloth and looking like this, God will give you a headdress. Amen. So a headdress instead of um, ashes and gladness instead of. Uh, morning, the garment of praise instead of faint spirit that they may be called as oaks of righteousness. Hallelujah. So Isaiah also said that Messiah would build up a broken hearted and proclaim the hour when the mount mourners would be comforted. That is in verse 3. To grant to those who mourn to give them a beautiful headdress here. Broken hearted and proclaim the hour when the mount mourners would be comforted, when their ashes would be replaced by a crown of joy. So, in their mourning, they would be replaced with the oil of gladness. That's, that's what I told earlier. So, the focus here on the people of God who mourn. Amen. So, who mourn because they will be comforted. Everyone experiences sad and tragic loses a time or another in this life. Do you agree? Kanina lang sa mga sharing natin, di ba? I believe that even young people already like experiencing difficulties, you know, at some point. Akala natin minsan yung mga parents were doing a lot and everything for our children so that they could live a life that is free of 
struggles, you know, struggles and conflicts, you know, that is, uh, it brings us pain when we see that our children are suffering. But you know, sometimes what they're experiencing, we cannot, it's out of our control. You know, no matter how much we try, it's beyond our control. Amen? Because they are, they have their own being. You know, they have their own being. And sometimes what they're struggling is from inside. So what I'm saying here is that all these things, people are subject to this. I have just sharing with my sister yesterday, some, going through something and like reacting, you know. We Christian people should really think twice or really put our hearts in God that when a situation arises, we should be calm knowing that God is in control. Amen? Because no one is exempted. You will mourn because especially all of us, this is just our temporary habitat, temporary place. Sooner or later, our loved ones will be taken by the Lord or even us ourselves ahead. So, and we will experience mourning. But, don't, ano, sabi nga sa salita ng Lord, but be on good cheer because God has overcome this already. Amen? So, <clears throat> Mourning indicates the pain and the grief and the anxious anxieties of the soul over some loss, often death of loved one. But it could be over the loss of valued life such as loss. So mourning, not only personal lo loss, you know, in this time, during the time of Isaiah, they are mourning because of the loss of their position in God, who, sh who they should be. Amen. So instead of people of God, chosen by God, they were sent to exile. So they were mourning of what's happening to them. So what causes this? Why are they in mourning? Amen? Mourning, the, it's because of their sins. You know? So, <clears throat> and in times of mourning, they look for hope. And most often in this world, there is little hope. You know, where do we run to when we experience something? Where do we run to? What do we seek? We, where do we seek help from when we experience these things? So, the focus should be, here should be that God, uh, the people of God who mourn because they will be comforted and everyone experiences sad tragic losses at some time or another in this life but the mourning that leads to the king comfort in the kingdoms can kingdom is mourning over humiliation that's what i said israel and its cause so the nation was in the grips of tyrannic, tyrannical powers and ruthless ruthless leaders ruthless rulers because of their sin so Jesus came and announced the kingdom was at hand. So that is the, the um, solution to what they are feeling at that time. So even in Isaiah 41, I don't know if it's in the um, slide, but Isaiah 40 verse 1, God says that comfort, comfort, comfort my people. So God is really a God of comfort. Amen? What, uh, what, I don't know what you're going through right now, if you're going through something right now, but be assured. God wants to assure you that He is the God of comfort and He will comfort you. Amen? So, my, 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 Messiah who would comfort those who mourn, but hallelujah. So, let's, let's continue. In, in, uh, Isaiah 25, 8, it says there, He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of His people He will take away from, the, from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. So even 
death. That is why we may experience death physically. But what's more important is our spirit because that will be forever. Jesus swallowed up death. He became the death and the sin so that we can have eternal life. Amen? So that should comfort us. Amen? Although we may be experiencing a lot of difficulties and testing. Sabi natin, no, parang hindi na naubos. Hindi na natapos yung mga testing one after the other. You know, Some, nung nakaraan, saan ba? Sa ating divine encounter, I also shared that I see that people are really experiencing experiencing hardships. You know, because this is the consequence of the sin. Kasi kung hindi lang sana nagkasala, si Adan at Eva, nung unang-unang-una, ay di wala sana tayong ganitong experience, di ba? But because of the original sin, that they, we are experiencing these difficulties. But, be of good cheer because God made a way. Amen? So, hindi pa rin niya tayo pinabayaan na totally eternal, mag, mag, maging um, um, death eternally. So, this is it, what, the, <clears throat> what Isaiah 25, 8 says. So, also in Revelation 21, 4, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, anymore for the former things have passed away. So this is in Revelation. We know that the Revelation is just is, is a prophecy. It's yet to be fulfilled. Amen? So when Jesus Christ returns and we will be with Him, all this, this is just temporary. All these pains and hurts, amen, na pinagdadaanan natin, there is an end to it. And we will reap the joy. Amen? And the fruit of being the kingdom people. Hallelujah. So number, blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. So, sabi doon sa Psalms 37 verse 11, But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. So, hindi lang peace. Gusto niyo ba ang ano? Peace. You know, you cannot buy peace. No matter how much money you have, how much you earn, no matter, it's the same thing. Billionaires and even the mid-class people are, are having the same. Amen? But, you know, sabi nga sa, sa salita sa Psalms, di ba? Na sabi na, um, we toil. Like, we, we work and work and work. But this is nothing if you don't have, do, if you don't do it for the Lord. Because only the Lord can give us that peace. So, <clears throat> the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. So, ano ba ang meek? In the Bible, the meek are those who have a spirit of gentleness and self-control. So, they are free from malice and condescending spirit. You know, sometimes you are good outwardly, but inside your heart. It's a different story. So the meek may like the poor, have no resources of their own, but they may, for Moses was described as being meek and humble. Makikita natin yan, Numbers 12.3. So now the man Moses was very meek, more than all people who were on the face of the earth. So Moses, we all know Moses, right? He was like a small G to big G. Amen, the God. During his time, that is why Israelites, they are, like, they are taking Moses as their God because during that time, only Moses can talk to God. And whatever God reveals to Moses, Moses will deliver it to people. So people see and hear Moses. Amen. And the characteristic of Moses is he was meek. Amen? Wasn't Jesus also described as meek? Amen? So being meek, it is a, a character of kingdom people. It's expected that it will be seen in us. Amen? So the meek, 
Do not exploit or oppress others. Hindi aggressive. You know, sometimes you, parang na nakikita ang mga tao as make us weak. You know, you don't want to be meek because you don't want to to appear as weak, right? But it's not. It's different. Being meek has nothing to do with being weak. Amen. Because being boastful or being verbally like always. Saying something does not mean that you're strong. Amen? It's the same way. But the meek do not exploit and oppress others. They are not given to vengeance or vendettas. They are not violent. And they do not try to seize power for their own ends. In short, they have emulated the nature of Jesus in their lives. Amen? Meek because you don't... Um, Like, um, parang pinopromote mo yung sarili mo. Amen? You are humble. You are gentle. That, just like that character of Jesus. Amen? Because we are all servants. Jesus served people. You know? So we are all servants. So they may be gentle and humble, but they cannot do. They can do. We may be meek people, may be gentle, and you seem weak, but they can do things. They can be champions, amen, of those who are weak and the uh, oppressed. So the promise, promise here, the earth, the meek will inherit, inherit the land or the earth, is that they will possess the land. What land is meant here? So, Probably, lagi nating naririnig yung promised land, di ba? Where God wants you to be. All through the Bible, this was the promise to the people of Israel. A land. But possessing the land signifies much more than a possession. Amen? Being there in the promised land is not the end of it. Right? It's not the fulfillment, but instead, it signifies a sense of place. Amen? Not only for you to, be, to enjoy the abundance, but inherit the land or the earth is that is, signifies, signifies the sense of place, security, and inheritance from God. God. Amen? So, inherit, the meek will inherit The land, the inheritance, whatever God is in store for you. What is the promise of God for you? So I believe all of us coming from the Philippines, Canada, or Toronto, Ontario, is a promised land to us. So now we're here, it is the place where God wants to establish us. Amen? This is our security, an inheritance from God. So when we are possessing the inheritance of God, we have to saturate the land. Amen? We have to take this land back to God. Amen? Not just to enjoy the blessings, not just to enjoy what Canada has to offer, but there is more to that. Amen? You, God has a purpose for you to be here in this promised land. Amen? So, you might, ano, kasi hindi ako Mickey, so paano ba yan? <laughs> hindi ako makapag-inherit ng, ng land. So, how does one become meek? So, what if one's nature is not meek? You know, so the answer to this comes from other passages of the Bible that describe how the spiritual life works. Amen? So, meekness and gentleness and the goodness are part of the fruit of the Spirit. So, that is why all believers, those who have relationship with God, dapat the fruit of the Holy Spirit is in us. So, meekness and gentleness is part of the Holy Spirit, like the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, you cannot say that I cannot be meek. I cannot be gentle. Hallelujah. So, so the direction, <clears throat> meekness and gentleness, the goodness part of the Holy Spirit, they are produced in the Christian by the Holy Spirit. So, the direction people should follow to cultivate a spirit of meekness would be 
to walk by the Spirit or be controlled by the Spirit of God so that the qualities of Christ can be produced in and through them through us. Amen? So, this instruction alone, no? This instruction is for us, His disciples. Okay, let's go. I think that there are eight, but I will end in this one. We will continue with the rest next time. Amen? So, na next one is, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, if you, ha you are hungry, physically hungry, you eat and then you will be filled. If you are thirsty and you drink, you will be filled. Amen? But if you are hungry for righteousness, thirsty for righteousness, and the promise of God is that you will be filled too. Amen? This is, you know, in the kingdom of God, righteousness should prevail. Amen? Because our God is a righteous God, is a holy God. Amen? And the kingdom people should be holy and righteous before Him. So why? We have to hunger for it. We have to want it. Amen? Because you know, it can be like, parang wala lang. You, you, you have this relationship with God, but you can do away with all the rest. With all the other things. I just want to be here in the church. I just want to sing. I just want to dance. I just want to serve. But when it comes to righteousness and holiness and pure purity, I can do away with it. Amen? Because nobody can tell. Amen? Except if it's really manifested in your actions. But you know, righteousness and being pure is from within. From your heart. So who can see your heart? Only God in you knows the condition of your heart. Amen. What you're lasting for. What you're after for. What you're seeking for in this life and in this world. Are you seeking for righteousness? Are you thirsty for righteousness and hunger for righteousness? If you really want to be righteous and to be right with God. Sabi natin, narinig natin kanina. Poor in spirit, being in a relationship, being right with God. Amen? If you truly want to be righteous, to be right with God, to be in the center of the will of God, you can be so. Sabi natin lagi, naririnig natin that, that we are only human. We are a work in progress and we are not perfect. And we sin every day. We sin daily in thoughts, in mind, in mind, in thoughts, in words, in action. You know, so what is this saying that, you know, because I, I will still sin. So why would I bother? But the kingdom people, this is the word of God, the word of Jesus. And the promise is that when you hunger for these things, for the, the things of God, you know, when you want this, you will be filled. And that's the promise of God. And God never lie. Amen? Just want, want it. Have it in your heart. To really hunger and seek for the godly things. You know, we hear this that we should not store up treasures on earth where moth and rust like takes up. But we should store up treasure in heaven. Amen? Treasure in heaven. The eternal things. And most of the time, it is hard. Do you find it hard to be really right with God all the time? Because the temptation is so strong. The temptation is so strong. And we are living here in this world that is filled with, with temptation. The lust of the eyes. 
The lust of the flesh. What's the other one? The pride of life. It's so strong and it's evident wherever we go. Sa work, sa mga pinapanood natin, sa mga naririnig natin, even amongst us sometimes. We're filled with temptation in how can I hunger and thirst for this righteousness when I am filled with all these worldly things that makes me feel happy and good. But as for the kingdom people, we should not last. We should not be after these things. We should be hang, hungry for and thirsty for the righteousness of God. Amen? In Psalms 42.3, sabi doon, My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? And sabi ni David, the Psalm of David, My soul thirsts for you, O Lord. In 63.3, one, oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Have we ever experienced that kind of, of, of hungry for more of God? Have we ever experienced, have we ever reached that point that no matter what, di ba, pagka dalawang oras lang hindi tayo nakainom, we feel thirsty. And we cannot be comfortable unless we drink something to quench the thirst. That kind of thirst that you, you feel like you will not Go on living without God feeling you that thirst in hunger, just like the Psalms of David, just like David. Sabi niya, as the deer pa, uh, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Have we ever longed for that in feeling? of God in us. You know, there's nothing like it. You know, our physical, when we are like spiritually strong in God, our physical will just follow. You know, because it's a matter of spirit and soul thing that our physical can will just follow. Amen? So, <clears throat> let us and in this one, I would like us to stand and let us worship God. Let us just meditate on those things that we have heard and bless the Lord even as we worship you. We want to bless the Lord. Amen. We long for more of the Lord. So worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Bow your head and connect with your God. He is right here with us and He can see your heart. Let us worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. God. You deserve, oh God. You deserve all this blessing. Hallelujah. Let's sing. Bless the Lord.
worship you, O oh God. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Let's just continue to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. As His people, as kingdom people, we want to honor the King of kings and the Lord of lords in our midst right now. Hallelujah. People of God, just continue to worship Him. Hallelujah. Worship His holy name. such blessing oh God thank you for making our spirit one with you oh God as we humble ourselves before you oh God Lord you feel us oh God even as we hunger and thirst for more of you you feel us oh God hallelujah all those promises oh God let it remain in our hearts oh God for we want, O oh God, you above all things. Above Amen. all these things, O oh God, we want you. We want more of you. And so, Lord, as your people, O oh God, have worshipped you, O oh God, in spirit and in truth. Right now, O oh God, you are pouring out your spirit upon them, O oh God. You are strengthening them, O oh God. You are making them, O oh God, your people, O oh God the people belonging to you, Panginoon. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, once again for dying on the cross for us, O oh God, that we are here right now enjoying these blessings, enjoying these benefits, O oh God. We, your people, O oh God, will continue to honor you and bless you. And even for those, O oh God, who have not come to a relationship with you yet jesus right now lord i encourage you you know them you see them oh god even as i pray oh god touch their hearts oh god to accept you to accept your free gift of salvation oh god all they have to do, Panginoon, is to acknowledge you that you are the Lord and the Savior of their lives. They acknowledge that they have sinned, O oh God, and ask forgiveness from you. And you are the God that is able to forgive them from all their sins and righteousness, O oh God. Allow them to receive this forgiveness and this love. And let them confess with their mouth that you, Jesus, is the Lord and the Savior of their lives. Hallelujah. If you are that, if you are that person, wherever you are, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior for the first time, 
the heavens are rejoicing, the angels are rejoicing, for you have come to a decision to accept, to be, to make Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you are belonging to God. I pray, I pray that you will have a renewing of mind. Your past is gone, and you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I pray that you will continue to grow in your relationship with God. I pray that God, that you will direct that people or that individual to connect to a church where they can grow, oh God. Even here in this, our online worship service, let them grow, oh God, in you, in the relationship with you, in your word, in, your, in, in, in their um, relationship with you, oh God, even in our worship services, in our praise and worship, oh God. Hallelujah. You know them, oh God, and I commit them unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. We honor you. All these things we pray. Amen and amen.